Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time today. Thanks, Shane. We'll start with Ruben, and then we'll go to Dave. Hey, Nick, uh, I wanted to ask you about N'Kobe Dean. Uh, I guess a two-part question. Number one, what did you see from N'Kobe his first two years when he wasn't playing as far as behind the scenes and your impressions of the way he's playing now? Yeah, um, N'Kobe's playing playing really good football. Um, we're really excited about how he's continued to, to evolve, evolve as a player. I think you, you got to see N'Kobe be able to contribute on special teams, particularly um, when he was healthy in 2022, made a big hit that I remember against uh, Tennessee and had some really good plays. And so you, you saw his ability, you saw his, uh, his talent, um, and, you know, he just he waited patiently that year be, uh, and then, you know, was able to uh, get meaningful special teams uh, reps that we saw, you know, great talent from. And then, you know, off the injury, worked his, his butt off to, to get himself back. And, and man, I can't say enough for how he prepares and how it's kind of translating to, to on the field. Um, so I know he'll continue to work hard to, to continue to get better. We'll go to Dave and then John. And Nick, as you think about the four years you've been here, uh, what has Brandon Graham meant to you personally and professionally? Yeah, um, can't can't say enough good things about BG. Um, I think you guys have asked me this a couple times, and and you know, just everybody in every workplace needs a, a Brandon Graham. Um, man, his energy is contagious. Um, you can't get around him and not. If you're having a bad day and you get around him, you you're, you can turn he can turn your day uh, uh, positive. Um, obviously, the player speaks for itself in the play on the field. Um, he's having a great year, um, but just can't say enough about him as a as a leader, as a captain, um, uh, as a teammate. Uh, and you know, I, I've said this a bunch. Like when I first got the head coaching job, to have you know Fletch and and Jason and Lane and BG to have four guys that were ten plus year Eagles at the offense and defensive line, um, really made the transition from a coordinator to a head coach um, made made that a lot easier because uh, of who they are as captains and people. Um, and BG's right there at the top of the list. Um, yeah, means a lot to me. Um, um, and yeah, just can't say enough good things about, about BG. We'll go to John and then Brooks. John, I think I'm you next. So I guess I'll jump in. Uh, Hey Nick, um, the off the field stuff with Brandon. Yeah. I obviously, um, just tremendous impact on the organization, but on the field, um, multiple injuries at the same position that can always cause problems. Do you, do you feel you have enough there at this stage? Yeah, I feel, I feel like the guys that, that we have, we have good options, uh, in house. Um, and I know that Howie and his staff and we'll, we'll leave no stone unturned. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, but again, like I said, the guys, you only focus on the guys that you have right now and the, the guys that we have, I'm really excited about their opportunity as bummed as I am for Brandon um and losing him um i'm excited for these other guys opportunities uh you know nolan's nolan's been josh and nolan and and jalix um you know nolan keeps getting better sweaty's having a great year um and jalix is is seeing an uptick in his in his snaps and and jalix and nolan they you know play with relentless effort um great physicality um, so as bummed as I am for BG, excited for opportunities that we have with guys in-house and, you know, we have some other options as well in-house. We'll go to Brooks and then Martin. Hey, Nick, um, and I know said you said Sunday that, uh, you know, you're holding out hope. Um, you know, are there any, with Brandon, is there any more definitiveness about what the projection is for the rest of the year? I know he said he shared he was having surgery next week and, Oh, questions on the sideline, like, can you play with this? Um, what do you envision uh, with him for the rest of the year? Yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty well known that he, he's, he'll, he'll be, he'll be out for the rest of the season. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, just, again, my heart goes out to him and, uh, you know, how much he's put into this, this thing, his entire career. Um, and just, you know, this season and, uh, we'll, we'll sure as heck miss him. Um, 
you know, and I know one thing about BG is that, you know, the play, like I said, speaks for itself. The leadership is is very special. His leadership is very special, and BG is going to be around, and you know he's going to be still leading. Um, I know that that man can lead um, when he's on the field, when he's off the field, uh, no matter what. And he'll and and I'm so I'm excited that we still have his leadership and his ability. You know everything that the that he feeds this this football team, and so uh, you know again, but bum for for Brandon. We'll go to Martin and then Tim. Hey, Nick. Um, if I could change gears a little bit to the upcoming game against the Ravens. Um, do you find that, like, you know, a lot of the challenges that you guys will face, you know, trying to stop Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry are kind of similar to what opponents face, you know, trying to deal with your duo of uh, Jalen and Saquon? Yeah, you know, both both different players, different different uh, schemes, everything like that. Um, but I think what the the thing that you can that you can really focus on is Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry are phenomenal football players that help their teams their team win football games. And Jalen Hurts and um, and Saquon Barkley are phenomenal football players that help their teams win football games or their team win football games. So. Um, you know, excited about the the opportunity this week because it's our next one. Um, it'll be a, a really good opponent, really well coached, good players, um, good atmosphere that will be there. Um, excited about the opportunity this week, and we're gonna have to have to be on it. Um, you know, against a really good team. We'll go to Tim and then Olivia. <laughs> and Nick, I know that uh, you know, your teams have gone up against Derrick Henry a decent amount over the course of your career. Any any uh, one game in particular or a moment stand out to you and then just your, you know, your thoughts on being sort of front row to, uh, to Barkley versus Henry on, uh, on Sunday. Sure. Yeah. Obviously both great play, great football players. Um, and a lot of respect for, for Derek Henry been able to, like you said, been able to see him a bunch when I was in the division. Um, I think we played him one time while since I've been here, um, in 22. Um, but yeah, big, strong, fast, um, hard to tackle, you know, and so, you know, that he is as advertised when you see him in person. Um, and obviously we all see it. You guys all see it. The play speaks for itself. Um, and so we'll have to be good with our fundamentals as you always, you know, you got to be, you know, you got to be in the right positions on defense. Um, you got to tackle well, you got to get off blocks well, you got to have relentless effort to the football, which is everything we pride ourselves in on defensive football, playing good football. Because uh, if you're not, he, he's able to to hit a home run um, and make you pay. If you're not every, if not everybody's on the same page. If you're not tackling well, if you're not getting off blocks well, if you're not hustling to the football, um, and so it remind you know that part of it reminds you of Saquon because um, it's similar, right? With Saquon, you know, if if the team doesn't tackle well, you're going against get off blocks well, hustle the football, um, or not all on the same page. You know, the home run can be uh, uh, he can hit a home run, and that's it's similar for both guys. We'll go to Olivia and then Bo. Hey, Nick. Uh, when we talked to Britton Covey at the end of last week, he said that he feels like this team this year is better equipped to handle adversity just based on the experiences that they went through last year. And then by the way that the team has taken to your messaging of staying humble during this win streak. Do you agree with that premise? And either way, why or why not? I think anytime you go through adversity, it makes you stronger if you allow it to. Um, and one thing that, you know, Again, last year is, is in the past. We are 11 games into this season, um, and we've went through adversity this season as well. Um, and when you go through that, you know, do you let it, or, or do you let it shape you, right? Do you allow it to, to ha you know, be humble and to learn the, the things that you can learn from it, understanding that when you go through adversity, um, you know, that is a great opportunity for growth. And I think that's what we've seen, right? Growth through adversity, you know, that's, you know, that's part of our, our nature, right, of, you know, lifting in the weight room. You can't get stronger unless you go through adversity lifting. That's the same thing here. And having that mindset of, like, hey, we're going to get better from this. And I think that's just been our mindset and we, what we learned from last year, what we've learned from some of the difficult things that we've went through this year. Um, and so, yeah, I think that you're, you're better a, as you go through adversity, and there's, there's no question uh, – if you allow it to, and I believe that this team, this coaching staff, this um, 
the, these players have allowed this, you know, our adversity that we've that we've had um, through our time here together shape us and get us to where we are right now. Um, and so we'll continue to let uh, our experiences mold us and and, and strengthen us. And um, you know, good opportunity this week uh, for against a really good opponent. We'll go to Bo and then Jimmy. Hey, Nick, I just wanted to, to follow up on what uh, what happened at the end of the first half there and what you might do differently next time. Yeah, not going to get too much into that. I'll, I'll keep it at the same as what we, we talked about after the game. We didn't we didn't coach it well enough. We didn't execute it well enough, um, you know. Um, so I'll just keep it at that right now. I respect your question, Bo. Sorry, I just don't want to get into uh, too much there schematically. Okay, thank you. We'll go to Jimmy and then Chris. Hey, Nick, um, Josh Sweat has seven sacks uh, during your seven-game winning streak. Seems to be having a bounce-back season. Last year, he had that four-game stretch where he played 60 or more snaps. He had a crazy game in, uh, against the Bills where he played like 81, I think. Was there a conscious effort to kind of bring that down this year? I think this year his high snap total is 45 in, in any one game. And then obviously he's probably going to have to play a little more with BG being out. So how do you kind of balance, you know, uh, keeping his snap counts down and, and also the need for him to play more with BG out? Yeah. Um, yeah. All our players uh, rep counts are on our mind and, and thought through uh, everybody has an individualized plan. I think I've kind of answered this too with through some Saquon questions, but everybody has a, a an individualized plan. Sweaty's no different. Um, he's having a good year. Uh, you know, he's got his body in shape to play the plays that he's playing. Um, but you go into every game, you think about everybody going into every game of how many, you know, touches you want them to have. Not that you always can control that, how many reps you want them to have, but there's some flexibility, um, within a game to, it may go, it may, you may, you may have a number in mind of how much you want them to play, but it could swing five, 10 plays either way. Right. Um, so there's some, some grace there. Um, but like I said, it, it's our job to think through every single player and their health and how we practice them and how we play them um, each week. Um, with that being said, you do what you need to do to win each football game. And you try, just like I say with Saquon, you try to manage it through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, knowing that every game's so important and every game you got to focus on how are you winning this football game. That's what you love about the NFL. It's unlike any other sport where you know, all chips are in every single week um, to because because you got you know it, it, there's only 17 of them, and so to answer your question, it's always on our mind. It's on everybody's mind, our every player's mind. Everyone's got an individual plan, um, and then you know it can go back and forth with where you get it to, um, and and when you get into a game, things can change a little bit and will change a little bit. Okay, thanks. We'll go to Chris and then Ed. Afternoon, Nick. Uh, Milton Williams had a strong game against the Rams. What have you seen from him this season? And do you think that his versatility lends itself to him playing on out edge more now that BG is out? Again, like I said, we have options to do different things um, uh, there. Uh, Milton's, Milton's done a, a really good job. He's tough. He works hard. Um, good teammate. Um, all the things you, you want out of a, a, one of your players. Um, plays with good fundamentals. His fundamentals continue to get better. You know, I've, I've said a lot of uh, nice things about Bobby King um, as the linebacker coach. Clint Hurd's done an unbelievable job as our defensive tackle coach um, and helping our defensive tackles get better fundamentally. Um, and, and, and Milton's, a, you know, Milton has, has seen that success because of how he works and the, the coaching that he's getting from Clint. Um, yeah, he made a, really, a couple of nice plays uh, in our game and had, had a really nice game in our game against the Rams. Um, and then for that being said, you can't be great without the greatness of others. Um, a lot of double teams were going towards Jalen Carter in that game, which left Milton have, have some opportunities one-on-one -on -one that he was able to win. Um, and so it's just a style of good defense. Again, you, you, need, you need your teammate, you need your brother to play uh, the best of your abilities. And, and I think we saw that uh, on Sunday. We'll go to Ed and then finish with Zach. Yeah, hi, Nick. Um, yeah. Just to ask you about your your schedule here. Uh, you don't have to get on a plane for the next rest of the season. Two bus trips and four of your last five at home. What what's the value of that at this point in the season, especially for a team that has played so many games coming out of an early bye? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that we we made up all that time on the Brazil trip and the uh, the Los Angeles trip last last week. I'm just kidding, but yeah, it's it's good. It, it's really at this time of the year. Um, yeah, it's a it's a benefit. There's no doubt. Um, you know, to be in this, you know, be in Philadelphia where you have these close uh, teams next to you that you can that you can have bus trips to. Uh, that's huge. Um, and then to have the, you know, we played a lot of road games early on, but, you know, when you play a lot of road games early on, now you get the opportunity to th play some home games. So we love being at home um, in front of our fans uh, where it's loud, one of the, the best place to play in the NFL. We know how, how, how rowdy it will be when we get back home in a, in a week. Um, but, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it's, an, it's an advantage to teams that think it's an advantage. And we, we definitely think it will be an advantage for us. Um, give us a opportunity to be home and, and, and not get on a plane here. So excited about that. But all we're really thinking about, I think that's big picture and that's something that I need to look at every once in a while. Only thing we're focused on right here as a football team is the Baltimore Ravens. We'll finish with Zach here. Hey, good afternoon, Nick. Uh, what's your philosophy or policy as, as far as injured players traveling with team, being around the team during the week? Because in the past four years, it's kind of varied based on the player and the injury. Yeah, it, it's exactly it, uh, Zach. Everybody's a little bit different. I want these guys, my, I want these guys to be, I know what it's like to go through an injury as a football player, and, it's, and, it, and it can be a really lonely place um, where you're watching your teammates go out uh, every week. I, and I put myself back to 2001 where I'm out with a, a leg injury at Mount Union, and every time my roommates left to go play a game, I'd be sobbing in my room that I wasn't able to be a part of that. And so, I like to be very sympathetic towards that, and I want the guys. This is they are. I want the guys always to be around the team. Um, you know, meetings, you know, uh, games, home or away. Everything is dictated though on the player's safety. Can they be on the sideline for a game based off their injury? Is it safe for them to have a plane ride, in which case we don't have, or the bus ride, a long bus ride, right? Um, and so everyone, we talk about that every week at the beginning of the week. Hey, is this guy good to go? Boom, here. And then uh, with guys in IR, like I got, you know, we got a little formula for all those things to, you know, to have a plan for all those guys. Um, but I think the most important thing that I want those guys to feel from me and from their and from the team is that just because they're not on the field, they have contributed to where we are to this point and will continue to contribute. And they're part of this football team. And uh, cause it is lonely, man. It, it, it can be a lonely place. I hate saying that, but like it, it really can. And so you, you want to, you want to embrace these guys, put your arms around them and let them know that, that they're, they're in it with us until the very end. And a reason why we're in the position we're you know, we're in it currently. And so, um, but everyone's at, treated a little bit different based off their injury um, and whether it's safe or, or not for them to, or beneficial or not for their recovery to be on the field or to be in the plane. As a natural follow-up, I'm, I'm sure you've seen Brandon's sentiment that he's going to be around. Is that, is that your expectation that he'll be able to take these trips and, and be, whether it's, it's practice or games? Haven't got to that point yet. I sure as heck hope so. Um, we need him. Uh, you know, I need him. Uh, the team needs him um, because, again, Brandon Graham affects the team way more than just on the field because you guys know him. I mean, because of the person he is, because of the captain he is, because of the teammate he is. He's in his 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 enthusiasm and love for football and love for his teammates is infectious and. Um, like I said, everybody in every workplace, I, I will, I hope and I wish that they have a Brandon Graham, um, available to them because it, it just, it brings up, um, everybody every single day. And that, that, that is a special, special quality that Brandon Graham has. And so, uh, yeah, I will be, even if they say that he might not be able to go on the sideline. I will be lobbying with everything I have to make sure that he can, uh, and I'll, I'll 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 do my best to protect him on the sideline if the if the ball gets anywhere close to him. Thank you.